guys what's going on and as you can tell I found out how I can have you guys hear my audio coming from my computer so there may or may not be more of that definitely help out during the live sessions so today we're going to go over some keyframe animation uh, what are keyframes how to create them uh, there's this space between the keyframes which is important. Uh, After Effects calls that interpolation, uh, how it interprets the, the movement between the two keyframes. Uh, the keyframe assistant, within there you have Easy Ease, and uh, it's, it's something I use all the time, not that big of a deal. And then I'll show you guys how to kind of cheat on some stuff. You can use a path and have a comp or an image uh, go along a path and I'll show you guys how to do that. Let's get into it. So I'm going to make a new comp. I'm going to call it, uh, what are we calling this? Keyframe animation. Everything's the same. Make a footage folder. Supporting comps folder. The first thing I'm going to do is make a solid. Then we got our solid down here. Let's uh, put something on it so we can see our animations. I'm going to generate a circle. And if you remember, it does block it out. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make it as full in the frame as I feel fit. So I'm kind of using the safe frame. It's close to 490. Let's do 490. You'll notice my habit, I hit save, come back and put this where I need to put it. Keyframe animation. All right. So I've got my circle. I'm going to pre-compose it, put it in its own composition. I want to make sure I come down here to move all attributes call this circle and okay so I've now got the circle in its own composition and I can go to the scale by pressing S and I've been using 25 and that gives us some room to work with so now we got a circle we got something to move and uh, I'll show you guys how to do this. So I'm just moving it over to one side. You could align it with the align tools. Make sure it's in the middle. You can kind of double check, make sure it's in the middle with both of them, and then align to one side or another. And I want to show you guys something here. So if you come down, and actually if you move this guy around because this is how we would be animating it I'm just clicking and dragging with the mouse but if you look down to this little area you'll see the numbers changing so that's one way to find out uh, which one of these guys you gotta look and pay attention to so I'm gonna center this again move it over to the left and I know its position so I'm gonna click this guy you click the stopwatch and then you gotta move through time and you can either move this guy or make another keyframe now I'm looking at my timeline and since I already created where it's really long I'm seeing 250, 500, 750 a good rule of thumb to test out an animation is to just do 75 frames 
that's only like three seconds so I'm gonna come down here and see how small that is I need to zoom up hit the home button and I'm gonna type it in again and I'm gonna put my work area render queue uh, to where it's at the end of that so we were zoomed out all the way to here and it's it's easy to get caught up and put your keyframes in proportion to whatever zoom length you are uh, in your timeline but always go to 75 and see how small it is and just zoom up on it so I'm gonna go to 75 and now I'm gonna add my new keyframe to frame 75 just be careful not to add a new keyframe way down here at 800 I'll show you. It'll be so slow when you play it back. It's just because your scale of time. So I'm going to go back to 75. And I can delete that guy actually. I'm zooming in, hitting home, going to 75. So now it's more manageable time. But so if you have your layer selected, we created one one keyframe uh, it's as easy as just moving your keyframe or moving your layer and it will automatically uh, put an in-between sequence between these two keyframes because it knows you're moving it so if I want it perfectly horizontal I'm going to align it to the center and align it to the right you see there's a little dotted line between it that's the how the computer interpolates between these two keyframes so I can hit the playback I have my playback queue queued up and that's literally how easy you can animate something as long as you turn on the stopwatch and start uh, moving your marquee down the timeline and then you change a value you're creating a, a keyframe and there's nothing in between here there's no keyframes in between but you can go to the center and actually move this guy and you added a keyframe because you changed the values you changed the position you can play back that again now if you want to adjust this keyframe you can use this guy this is how you create or remove a keyframe but these little arrows jump to the next key and you can go backwards and forwards now I use a quick key uh, J and K so it's like doing these two guys but not having a mouse over here you can just keep your mouse over here and go to K jumps forward or backwards use those a lot unless there's a lot of keyframes it'll go to the keyframes to the layers above it or below it uh, another thing I use is hold down shift when I'm using my cursor and it'll snap to these keyframes too it's very important if you don't do that uh, you think you're over that keyframe and you want to adjust the size or the the position it gives you another keyframe you zoom up and you can see it's another keyframe and that's how you get really messed up animations it's no longer smooth there would be a jump so I see that's still the bad key I can delete that guy and I hold down shift and I can shift and select on that keyframe and then you can adjust it you hit playback for that so there's things to, to watch out for now if you notice that as I pull this guy I'm going to delete these keyframes again I'm going to do something else I'm going to start clean so I have nothing selected uh, I just moved my guy over to be in a good position to start to animate I'm going to click this guy again so it activates 
the keyframes from now on. Uh, some people get caught up and just move this guy and say, why isn't it look like it's animated? Preview it, nothing's happening. It's because you didn't move your cursor down the time. You just changed the value of your first keyframe. So that's one thing to watch out for. Uh, don't think you're animating without moving through time. You actually have to move your cursor down. And I always pick 75. I'm going to come up here and use the align tools. Let me fit. So I got this guy going up to the top. It's a little slow. Uh, I want it to come back down. So I'm just going to move your keyframe. You can just select them and move them. Uh, if you notice these little dots, as I move it closer, you know it moves. The dots move further away. That that means it's going to be super fast. So I'm just going to move it to the middle. And you don't really have to pay attention to those dots, but it kind of helps. Uh, you'll get used to seeing it. So I'm just going to move this guy over here. I want to make sure it's in the middle and to the right. And I'm going to play it back. So it's looking pretty smooth. And it looks smooth because if uh, you deselect that, that little line disappears. If you select it again, the line is there. So uh, it, it hides so you don't go crazy seeing all these lines from all your layers. But if you select this guy, you see that there is a dotted line between it. That is the trajectory. Uh, that's how After Effects is interpolating between these points. Now you can interpolate it with a straight line. And in this case, if we select this guy or any of these keyframes, and if you look down here, it is being selected either way. Uh, the trajectory between these points can be a straight line or curved line. The curved line is called a Bezier and it's uh, just like Photoshop and uh, Illustrator. And I wanted to show you here you have spatial, the space between the keys, interpolation. It's on Auto Bezier. If you click that guy you can straighten them out. You can keep them as a Bezier and you can keep them as a continuous bezier or auto bezier. Uh, these are kind of the same. Continuous is more the the one you kind of see here. If I click OK, you know it's just like it looks just the same. But if you notice, there's these little handles. Whenever you select the keyframe, you have handles just like a mask tool or the pen tool and you can actually change the behavior of the the way it interacts between these two keys I can play that back and we can see how it's it, that's why it's so smooth because it's trying to create a smooth curve between those two points or those three points and that's important because uh, sometimes these animations can behave weird and it's because of that, this uh, interpolation between the frames. And I'll show you this way. If you s select all these keys, and you can just select around them, uh, just like any other program, you can hold down Control and select more. Shift, and I'm holding down Shift, and it'll deselect, or you can select more. But if you select all your frames, and another way to do that, if you have a whole bunch that go beyond your viewing area and you want to select everything, everything down this path, you could just select this name position. Any of these will select everything along, kind of like Excel, when it selects the, uh, the different kind of rows or columns. So if you select this name position and you have keyframes, it'll select all the keyframes.
all the way down as far as you got. And it's helpful because uh, if you want to change the interpolation between these keyframes, you can select all your keyframes. Uh, it'll only, when you do this function I'm about to do, it only works with whatever's selected. It won't mess with anything else. So I'm going to right click, go to keyframe interpolation. And if you look, it's spatial, the space between the keys. It's on continuous bezier. It's the curve between the keys. Uh, I'm going to do it to linear so we can see the difference. Linear is like line. It's going to put straight points, straight distances between those two lines, those three lines. And when you play that back, you see it's really rigid. So sometimes you want this, and there's different cases. Sometimes you want the smoother version, but how you change it is uh, you select this guy's all the keys. You go, you mouse over one of the keys. Doesn't matter which one, as long as they're all selected. Right click, keyframe interpolation. Go to spatial interpolation, and you can do continuous. The computer will try to keep it as smooth between those points as possible. And hit OK, and it'll show up. So if your animation is looking a little funky, or it's behaving a little weird, it's probably the interpolation between the points. And that's how you fix it. And looking at 75 frames, you know, this ball is going pretty slow. So if you want to slow it down or speed it up, you really want to speed this guy up. So I'm going to look at 25 frames, put this in about in the middle, go to 25, so the middle of that should be 15. Maybe I can't count. I'm going to eyeball it. And I'm going to reduce my playhead and hit preview. And notice it speeds it up. And I'm going to, if you want to slow it down, I was at 75. You just kind of pull everything right back and preview it. So it depends on where you are whenever you're zoomed into your timeline. And then you could judge, you know, 75 frames is a pretty good judge of how your animations are gonna go. So if you want to do like a bouncing ball or some kind of button animation, uh, don't do it over five minutes or, you know, a thousand frames. Just do 75 and get the feel for it. And then from there, you have a good judgment on uh, how you can set up your other animations. Like this ball is pretty, like if it was a lamb jumping over a fence, 25 frames is a pretty good uh, judgment on how fast that should be. So all other animations that are similar to jumping over a fence or something like that is uh, pretty good within 25 frames. So I'm just deleting everything, starting back at zero. I'm gonna make a keyframe, go to 75 frames, and move it down. Hit save. I'm gonna play it back. So if you look at this guy, there's some things you can do with the keyframes. And it's called easing. So if you uh, look at this guy, the line between it is very straight. It's linear. But then if you look at the movement, uh, when it's going from one keyframe to another keyframe, 
there's nothing it is linear too it's it doesn't have anything special to it but in After Effects you can say when you leave this when you're going uh, out of this position you can tell it to ease out and then kind of ease in and one example that I put it is if you're running or something's moving towards a wall if you just leave these keys the way they are you would hit the wall at that speed so I'm gonna speed this guy up a little bit play it back now if this was being thrown at a wall like a pumpkin or something it would probably splat on the wall but if you want it to I'm gonna replicate it with my mousing over this timeline uh, if you wanted to replicate it to slowly stop or ease into this position uh, After Effects has this ability to do that and I'm gonna give it some space so we can rest here uh, we're gonna have it play and then stop play and then stop so I'm gonna say this layer whenever it goes to this keyframe to ease into this position don't just stop so you can right click this keyframe go to the keyframe assistant and they have this thing called easy ease easy ease in easy ease out uh, we want to not slam into this keyframe we want to ease into the keyframe so you can ease easy ease in and it gives a little icon change and that means it's the arrow is pointing into the movement and I'm gonna play it back so it's a little softer it doesn't just hit and at the beginning we want it to not just take off at full speed as if you're a car about to race you want your you can't help but ease into it so you keyframe assistant you want to ease out of that position and that's what the arrow looks like and if you you might not can tell but that the sphere is like easing into the the full uh, speed and then it slows down to this position and this kind of stuff really helps a lot thinking of uh, slowing this guy down it's a little noticeable there it's, it's just a softer type of movement and it's perceived value like this stuff really makes you stand out whenever you're doing things so this keyframe you're going out of that key it's like a, if it's linear we're going into this key and we get it and then we're going out of that key so just remember that and I can select all these keys and hit control and it gives a little circle icon if you hit control again uh, it'll make you go back to your normal keyframes nothing special we can take a look at that see it's just continuous no easing let's do it again I want to ease out and if you look there's a quick key shift F9 I've learned those that was one of the first quick keys I've learned to ease and now it's just a little softer now if you wanted to have this sphere or circle uh, move to a position stop for a second and then move back out we can do that so right now I'm going to look in my bin and clean it up 
So I'm going to do this guy. As we go over the different animation types, I'm going to keep it separate. So I'll make a version 2, double click in it. I'm in version 2. I'm going to delete my keyframes. So I have no animation. I'm going to create a new key, move this guy down. And what helps is if you think of it like a dollar bill with four quarters if your animation is over a hundred or over fifty uh, divide it by fours or whatever because we got uh, four positions so you can go to 25 move it somewhere in the middle I know exactly where the middle is with my line tools and I'm gonna have it sit there for a little bit so I want the same value uh, this was in one position. Now we're in the middle. We need the middle again. So that create if it, two of these are the same, it should pause and not move. And then we're gonna go out. So I got four keys, uh, one on this side, one on that side, and two of the same thing in the middle. So that gives us a wait time. I'm going to play that guy back. Now, if you guys do it, I'm going to go to my keyframe interpolation. It'll probably it should give you a, a janky uh, movement in here. And I, and I corrected mine. Let's see. Hmm. Ironically, it's not showing up. Well, uh, if you do this and your computer isn't set up for it, like if you haven't done this before, uh, I think by default, your animation is set to uh, a bezier. So if you try to animate this guy, actually, I think I can replicate this because I did it differently. Okay, I did it one way, this whole setup with the animation. I did it in order, like linearly did it in order of the way I wanted it. So I said I wanted this keyframe to go to this position. And I made this keyframe for this position. And then I have it paused, same position. And then I have it moving back out this way. Let's preview this guy. So if you do it in order, like the, the program and uh, this process is a little smoother. I'm gonna try it another way. So I'm gonna make my keyframe here go to 75 this is where it should act up so right now I made two keyframes I have it going across the screen but if I wanted to, to, to pause in the middle I can create a keyframe here and say I want it to come in here and then stay paused all the way to this point so I can take the same key and copy and paste it to this point it's going to paste to wherever your cursor is. So I've got my position that's on the left, my position on the right, and then I have my position in the middle, two keys, so it should uh, move to this point, pause because it's the same value, and then move back away. And sometimes you animate this version. So you, I started with the two positions and the computer interpolates between that. So when you add a keyframe to that type of interpolation, it's gonna to try to interpolate that new key into this already made animation. And you might get some funky stuff like this. So you might have created this. Now how do you fix it? If you can remember earlier, this line 
you might not can tell but there's some like funky stuff going on and it's better when you kind of zoom out like there's some thickness right here and I can't show you because I, I can't you can't really see it but the way this continual bezier is trying to behave between these points is uh, just like before with that curve it tried to create a natural curve for you well here it's horizontal laying down so we can't see it but it's trying to create a curve between here and it's like a little loop and then it goes back this way so when you play it it'll give you this little loop this little back and forth even though these keys are exactly the same so how do we fix that so that little move when we see these handles that means you see that loop there's the loop and it was just at an angle to where we can't see it so in order to fix that is we need to take the bezier off so if I select all my layers right click go to interpolation spatial interpolation see it's on continual bezier if you go to linear hit OK it's just going to do those straight lines between those keys so now it behaves the way we want and that's what we want most of the time so if anything's funky it's usually the bezier you select those guys interpolation spatial interpolation the space between the keys you go to linear sometimes you build it right sometimes you don't but that's how you fix it okay so this is a good example on how to put uh, eases I want it to ease into the stop and then ease out of the stop so this key is the one I want to start with uh, we want to ease into it because we're going to be moving and stop but we want it to ease into a stop right click easy ease in and then we have the other same keyframe but we want it to slowly pick up and then pick and take off which is the ease out we want to ease out of that frame and then we're going to play that back and that's looking pretty good and if you want to speed it up you make these two keys faster your pause longer I'm gonna go to 10 frames I always try to keep it in fives or tens so I could uh, easily go back one like 10 from 75 is 65 it's pretty easy pretty easy math for me and now it'll zoom in and zoom out now this could be text on screen coming in from the left you can read it and then it leaves but uh, one trick I do is this pause is a little dead a little too dead for me I like to keep it uh, alive so keep it moving so these two frames are the same so I'm gonna make this frame different than this one so it'll and not drastic just a little bit so I'm going to come in here, make sure that I'm right over this keyframe. And I'm going to shift left arrow twice. And I'm going to make sure I'm over that keyframe. Shift right arrow. So they're equally uh, moved in both directions, away from each other. So if you just move it a little bit, it's going to creep along and it's a more interesting pause than just being dead and not moving at all so that's a pretty cool trick I tend to do that a lot so I always save okay uh -oh. let me do another one 
So I'll double click, uh, duplicate that guy, double click it. I'm in version three. Make sure you're not messing up your different versions because those are what I'm going to want to see. I'm going to delete my keyframes. Select my layer. Helps to go back in the center. Okay, so if I want this guy, make sure you're on the move tool. Uh, I want to make this guy be out of screen and come up. And you can have it go either way. But I want it to come up and then bounce a little bit. I'm going to show you how to do that. Like classic cartoons, it's called squash and stretch. Uh, and just have it come up and bounce. So we'll do that. Now I want it to end up right in the middle. So if I want it to end up in the middle, I just kind of move my cursor to where I, I want to have animation here and I want it to stop in the middle. And then it can do whatever. But if you want it right in the middle, make sure you don't start your key here because you're going to have to move it down. I'm just starting it further down anyway. So I'm picking 25. I'm going to come back here. And you have to kind of imagine what you're doing. So I'll put a, two keys, one that's out of view, one in view. And you can use those quick keys of J and K. This is where I want it to end up, so I'm going to add more keys between here. And if you play it back, it, it might get you a little confused, but this is what it looks like. But we're going to add some bounce to it. And I'll show you how I do that. There's usually uh, two more keys I can add. So I want to have one be the same height as before of where it's going to end up here. I'm going to copy this keyframe twice. So here is where it's going to end up. Here should be the highest point. So just move it up a little bit. And here should be lower than where it's going to end. So I'm going to lower it just a little bit. And just those two keys add a little bounce. Now that's a little slow. So I'm going to play it back and take a look at it. So I think it could be sped up almost twice. So I'm around 20, I'm around 25, so about 15 is where it should end. So I can select these guys, and this is where it should end. And that's taking up too much space. Uh, you can use your up and down keys on your keypad, and you can go by frame by frame. So one, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm ending at 15 and I just counted three frames back to adjust when I reduce my render area. That's looking a little more snappier, which is not bad. So at the end, I want it to definitely end softly. So I can right click this guy, keyframe assistant, and ease in. Now these two guys, there's movement coming in and going out. And I'd want that on both. Uh, and the way to do that is the keyframe assistant, easy ease. So it's doing the in and the out at once. And if you take a look at this, that's what the ease in looks like. And I'm going to change this icon, this little keyframe, and it has it on both. And you can use F9 by itself. And do F9. And that eases in and out. And then eases in at the last one. So let's play that back. So it's a little more. Uh, springy but stiff and that's kind of cool 
and from there you can eyeball it and move it away from your even numbers and I'm just moving the keyframes we can then go in and move the distance of the the keyframe itself so we can do it more drastic just move it bigger it's looking pretty good and this is all like the end of this keyframe is at 17 seconds or 17th of a second because 30 frames is one second so this is all within under a second just to give you a scale of time and what we're dealing with that's looking pretty good And from there, uh, if you want it to go back out, we'll let it sit on screen for till 30. Uh, I want the same exact key over here, so you can copy and paste. It still has something on it, so you can control click it until it's back to normal. So now we got the same value, and we want it to do a little anticipation and then get out. And let's see, if I want it to go, say, to the right, this is classic cartoon animation. It's going to go to the right. You go a little bit this way first, and then it zips out. So we can play that back. Total cartoon anticipation. Uh, just try not to overdo it. So now we can put eases to this guy. We want it to start moving to this position. And I'm noticing some funkiness. And that's the Bezier happening. So if there's funkiness, it's good to select everything, right click, go to interpolation, and I see that we have the Bezier. This kind of animation should be on linear. So we can do linear and hit OK. So when we preview it again, it should be more accurate. Okay, so I want this guy to ease out of its position because this is the pause. And I want it to ease out. And this guy has direction. It's going in both directions. So I want the easy ease. So ease out, ease into that guy, and then take off. So now we're going to play that back. Now when it leaves, it's a bit slow compared to the intro. Intro is pretty good speed. Outro is slow. Now if we look down here, uh, this is the intro, so the space of frames between these two, or the time between these two is good. Here it's really long, so we just kind of need to match that. And now we can play it back, it should be closer. And I save, it's good to save if you get that much done. So that's looking good. And I'll give you a little bonus uh, thing to check out. So if you have like this composition, it's pixels, and we're actually moving it across distance and to where that distance changes, uh, you couldn't do this effect on footage because that's just not how it works. But if you move the footage like you would move this circle, or since we're moving the circle across distance and it's kind of fast, because that's pretty fast, it should have a motion blur on it. And After Effects has a built-in motion blur that calculates 
when it something's moving fast if it's slow and the pixels aren't moving across long distances it won't show up as much as this should so if we go to where it's moving fast and we have our layers we have our different little things here and one of them has this little icon that's called motion blur simulates uh, the shutter I'm going to turn it on nothing happened because this is per layer but the composition has another one so this enables for the composition so what's good about this thing is if you have a bunch of layers that are moving kind of cool stuff going on you can turn on the motion blur and have them ready so when you turn on this guy it'll turn on and turn on and it'll look at every layer that has that icon clicked and then that uh, will be motion blur applied to it but as you work and you don't want to crash your computer you can just turn off uh, the motion blur globally so no matter what layers are there even though they're turned on they'll be turned off and you can work and not crash your computer but when you go to render a movie you can turn that guy on and then it might take a little bit you hit save then you render out now we're going to preview this guy with the motion blur and it'll just feel a little more real and of course that adds production value to anything you do if you can I pretty much add this to every project it just makes your stuff look pretty good but I do this kind of animation on a lot of interface a lot of text um, any kind of shape uh, you can do all kind of stuff with it and you can do the same technique with scale too and we can do one with scale this kind of uh, too high low position we want so we like move we have a high we have a low position we want and you can do that with scale so I'm coming to this guy I'm going to delete my keyframes uh, make sure it's in the middle now my scale is set to 25 because my scale at 100 is huge it's just a good habit to make a pre-comp I'll show you why in a later lesson but if you can imagine the 25 being our 100 percent we can do the same type of animation uh, create a keyframe I'm going to create using the same keyframe across my steps so I'm going to imagine first I'm going to imagine the circle is scaled to nothing and then it's going to become a little too big and then a little too small and then just right so it'll give me that but give me that bounce so the one that's easy is I'm going to knock it down to zero make sure my number keypad is locked so I can type that's one thing if your number keypad doesn't work you have number lock off so just my habit I save so I've got zero to what we want so this one should be a little bigger so let's say 30 because it's 25 next was up is 30 and if it's 25 I'm gonna go to 20 and then the last key should be 25 and we can preview that get a little bounce so a lot of interface stuff does this and this is like my go-to animation feel free to use it now it's a little rough because everything is let's see right click interpolation uh, it's grayed out because that's not the kind of property it is so it should be default as linear there's no way to do a bezier on the scale at least in this program unless you code it and I don't know how to do that so we're going to ease in to the very last frame 
we know that one's uh, where we want to stop so ease into this guy and there's movement on the front and the back of these two we could select both of them keyframe assistant easy ease now I'm going to preview this We got a little blip. One thing that's cool about After Effects is if you wanted to have this guy go out the same exact way, like that. So we would need to reverse it, but we need these keys again, like say over here. So if you select these guys, Control C, Control V, it always pastes where your cursor is. So be careful not to put your cursor halfway. You'll screw it up and won't know where it is. Control Z. Uh, make sure it's away from everything. Control V. Now it's the same exact keys. So what we want to do is flip these keys. And you can do that by going to right click keyframe assistant and look on the bottom. Uh, this is very convenient and then watch the keys flip so it has this value here and since that one's uh, it just defaults to easy ease because it didn't know which way uh, your keys are going I control click that get it to normal and I'm going to ease out you could keep it on easy ease but I'd like to make it look unified like a reflection of what it is so that's how easy it was. You select these keys, paste them over here, right click and time reverse those keys, and it'll flip them. I want to hit playback. So it comes in and goes out. Could be a logo. Logos could come in like that. So let's go to keyframe animation three. thinking we could copy and paste some keyframes but I think it's okay to keep it simple but we went so far from just moving from one side to another so that kind of cool stuff and we can put motion blur on this guy see what that looks like You can't really tell on my monitor, but on your playback monitor, you should be able to see it. So I want to see uh, each one of these on you guys' homework. And this is where it could be a little more fun for you guys, actually getting into it. So this is actually using the keyframe animation. There is another way to do animation. It's going to be the fifth one. I'm going to come in here and delete all keyframes. So we have no animation on this guy. It's in the center. I'm going to bring down a solid. Now, why am I bringing down a solid? Because you can draw a path and use the path as a, an animation path. So you can tell this object to go along this path over a certain amount of time. So for example, uh, I'm gonna show you what not to do first. So my circle here is built big. It's big in frame. So if I go to 100%, you know, it is big. Well, so 25% is the size I want inside this comp. Now if you draw a path using the pen tool on this object itself, because that's the one I want to animate, if you try to draw a path on this guy, uh, it's going to keep it at that 100% scale so it'll be huge 
you don't want that you want to make a solid actually I'm going to show you the right way to do it first so you want to make a solid first and you can turn that off I turned off both of them but I have my utility selected uh, I say a solid because the solid is at 1920 1080 so when I draw a path I know how it's going to act within the 19, 10, 8, 19 uh, 20 1080 frame size because if I draw it at 19 20 1080 it should be good at 19 20 1080 uh, this guy is scaled down so it'll be amplified so let me do the right way first we got our solid turning it off so I can see what's going on I'm going to fit this guy to view and I'm going to use my guides and I'm just going to draw some wannabe sine wave I'm going to adjust it a little bit okay so I got a squiggly line which if you hit M brings up all the mask properties or brings up the mask so if we look we have our pen tool it created a mask change the color and within the mask it has its properties if you select the mask path not this top not this top layer but the mask path you copy that you're copying the shape of this guy I'm going to turn on my circle select in the circle go to my position start a keyframe so you need to start it it creates a keyframe and then paste and it gives you this uh, preset key and go to fit it, like when I pasted it, it gave me this right here and if I select the layer you can see that it created for the trajectory and the keyframes it uses the information of the path that I drew so I'm going to drag this backwards and play back I still have my motion blur on you might want to turn this guy off if it's affecting your computer so that's pretty cool like if this was a fly, a bumblebee, a bird an airplane, a ship uh, you can mock up a game like this if it's a top-down kind of game and again just like a path tool go over to your move arrow uh, you can move this thing you can adjust it you can readjust your beziers but notice that they're broken immediately whenever you you change it see how it's a hard angle uh, be careful with that but you can adjust the, the positions of these points and it'll keep it as, uh, as, as much as it can I mean it can go pretty extreme as long as you don't adjust the handles so that's pretty cool like if you wanted to do a cable or something and have a pulse going along the cable whatever path you use to make the cable you could use to send this sphere which could be a pulse going down the cable and then you could put some blur effects or kind of glows or whatever so this is a uh, another one I wanted to show you uh, how to draw I duplicated this guy again coming in the utility deleting my mask coming in here and you can delete your keyframes by unchecking this so watch out with that guy so now I have nothing I'm back where I was utility no mask for example this could be like a circuit board or a top-down of a car driving through the city 
or through streets. It's kind of up to you, but uh, I'm going to have a straight line first, and I'm going to curve it, and then a straight line. I'm still adding a curve, so it'll give me a curve on this end, just like the shoe. And you could put a hard angle in there. That's no problem. It's up to your uh, whatever you need done. And then you can just start clicking and creating a curve again if you needed to, depending on what you're trying to make your object go along the path. It's a, it's a kind of up to you. So we just need to finish up this line. And then it'll be all good. And you could make it as funky as you want. So let's go straight for a little bit and now go funky. So I'm going to show you guys just and you can close it but I don't close it for this one so you can watch this guy be very uh, regular stare at I mean it's up to your pen, uh, pen tool skills and make it go around smooth and then start doing whatever you want I mean that could be like uh, tracing handwriting and then having a little circle go over that handwriting and have a little glow to it but the utility is just for something to draw on that is to scale of this frame 1920 to 80. So I'm going to change the color again. Select my mask path. Control C. Come down to my position of my layer. I'm going to start the animation. I get one keyframe. Paste. Now, noticing all these little points, and it's across 60 frames. Let's hit play. It might be a little fast. Feels a little fast. If it's fast in the playback, it's faster than play. But it's kind of cool. Looks like a firefly or something like that. So I'm looking at that. I could slow it down by twice. So I can just look at the position. Uh, positions and do it by proportion so about this uh, you can use math 60 plus 60 is 120 or you could just eyeball your mouse and come over here and then see what you're close to and I'm going to select this one key and notice all the keys are in proportion that's just the way the code was for this uh, you can come in here and select these guys but once you do it breaks the formula and it's kinda of jacked up so just adjust it by the two end keys and don't mess with the keys inside so you can see it go up the stairs do that little loop it's pretty cool and you know some people prefer this method than the other way that I was showing like the freehand uh, keyframe animation which we are going to use more and more uh, so you're going to get used to it but this is another way and it's a pretty complex path but I use it more for like handwriting uh, letters or doing some kind of like especially around Houston they have pipelines of oil and you want to show like the flow of the oil and I would redraw a path in there and have it pulse or go along this path so that's pretty much it I'm going to want to see this uh, animation one through five or six replicated in you guys homework and that'll be pretty cool so you know what that means 
you've made it this far. Keep up the good work. See you next time.